I want to speak to you today about the subject of uniters or dividers. I realize that we're all dealing with the pandemic at this time, but I want to begin a series about the division in our politics and how that has unfortunately carried over to our response to the pandemic. Now, over the past several months, I've written a number of articles on the subject of religion and politics. And you actually find them written on my website that's, that's uh, written below. The messages that I'm gonna be giving over the next uh, several months probably are gonna be expanding on these particular themes. Now, I'm specifically addressing my remarks to my evangelical and Messianic Jewish friends, particularly in the United States. And so my question is, to all of us, are we called to be uniters or dividers? Now, I'm a Messianic Jew who came to faith through an evangelical Christian organization over 50 years ago. I've fully dedicated my life to Jesus the Messiah and have worked to make him known for all of these years. I grew up in a political family in Washington, D.C. My father was involved in politics from as far back as that I can remember. He was, um, he was involved in political campaigning. He was worked for the House of Representatives. He worked for the United States Senate. Later, he worked for President Nixon. And following in his footsteps, I did the same thing, or similar things. I worked on a lot of the campaigns that he was on, involved in. I worked even as a teenager in various Senate offices. And eventually, when I graduated from law school, I went to work in the House of Representatives and later in the United States Senate as a chief counsel on a US Senate subcommittee. It was from there, I went into the ministry where I felt called by God to go into the ministry. And I became a Messianic Jewish rabbi for over 22 years in Richmond, Virginia. And then a little over eight years ago, we moved to Israel I've formed a law firm here uh, with other partners who are also followers of Jesus, and I'm also active politically in this country. But I believe that the period of history that we are standing in, that we are in right now, that the standing and future of the United States is being weighed in the balance. It's not because of the pandemic. Rather, I believe it's because of the division the cultural wars, and the acceptance of different narratives of facts and truth. It's interesting that Jesus himself said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Facts and truth are critical in life. Without them, we live in complete and utter confusion. The great tragedy of the modern American experience, or I'd say maybe one of the great tragedies of the modern American experience is the amalgamation of the evangelical church, conservative politics, and the Republican Party. As believers, many are receiving their political opinions and views generally from one side, whether it's pastors or evangelists or even conservative talk show hosts. I'm gonna be presenting a different perspective in my messages. It's not because I'm a Democrat or a liberal. I'm not, in fact, I'm a Republican. I grew up in a Republican family. I'm still registered as a Republican to this day. In fact, most of my life, I would consider myself politically, at least in the United States, as a moderate conservative. In fact, when I was in politics in the United States, I worked for a Republican leader in the United States Senate. It happened to be during that time when the moral majority was formed. The moral majority was the forerunner of modern, of the modern amalgamation of the evangelical churches, the Republican Party, and conservative politics. And at the time, I saw the dangers of this political movement. I felt that much, many in the movement were narrow-minded and uninformed. And worse, they polluted the gospel. At the time, I was leading a Bible study on Capitol Hill for Capitol Hill staff primarily. We had staff members from both parties come to this 
weekly Bible study. There was I only had one rule for the Bible study, which is that you were to leave your politics at the door before you came in. And when we came in, <clears throat> we never discussed political issues, legislative issues, anything like that. Rather, we let the Bible speak for itself and to be able to impact our lives personally. In 1988, I left the political world behind and went to seminary, eventually into the ministry to lead a, the congregation in Richmond, Virginia. During those years as a congregational leader, I refused to talk about politics. I would not allow political pamphlets to appear in the building or voting pamphlets that would describe how you were, in other words, how you were supposed to vote according to the way various candidates viewed themselves because they often they were politically inspired. Over the years, sadly, the country became more politicized and polarized. The evangelical movement organized itself politically into multiple organizations, and Christian leaders became more outspoken in favor of certain political leaders. Look, when I became a follower of Jesus, which was in 1969, I did so after I heard about him, I read about him, that there was something about him that was that was, appealed to me personally. It gave me a purpose in life. There was something about who he was and what he said that just reoriented my life completely. It, it gave me something to believe in that was bigger than myself. It put my life into order. And the life of Jesus is a model life where he speaks for the truth. He stands up for integrity and he cares for the downtrodden. By the 1990s and 2000s, the emphasis in many evangelical churches was redirected towards cultural changes. Now, these many, many people are now in these churches are now listening to people like Rush Limbaugh confronting or, or uh, excuse me, electing candidates who were reflecting the church's moral values, things of that nature. All I can say is, what a change from the way it was. In the 90, I remember in the 1990s, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh for a few years. And, and honestly, I found him entertaining. But over time, I began to become disturbed by his name calling the di division that he was causing and his mean-spiritedness. I realized that this is not the life of the follower of Jesus the Messiah. It does not reflect his values. Now, if this offends you, if you're a Rush Limbaugh fan, I'm sorry, but this is not the way of Jesus the Messiah. Consider Jesus himself who grew up in a nation that was under military occupation. His own people, the Jews, were persecuted by the government. It is, but in his public ministry, he never spoke about the government or politics. What did he speak about? He spoke about the love of God. He spoke about the love of fellow men. He spoke about humility. He spoke about repentance. He spoke about the kingdom of God. He spoke about integrity. He spoke against religious hypocrisy. He gave hope. He healed the sick and the downtrodden. At the end of his ministry, the Roman governor Pontius Pilate gave the people a choice of whom to save, either Jesus or Barabbas, a political revolutionary. The people chose the political revolutionary. I fear that many evangelicals today are listening to Barabbas and not to Jesus. The gospel is not about politics or government. It's about the power of God into salvation. The gospel is transformational. It gives hope. It causes change in us and through us. So now, how do we navigate today's society? What role, if any, should we play in government and politics? How should we view the press? What should we... What should, we listen to, what should we listen to to know the truth? And how shall we view the nation of Israel in political theological terms? In the coming weeks, 
I'm going to try to address these issues and more. But I want to leave you with this statement of Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be known as the children of God. Are your words and actions uniting us or dividing us? See you next time.